Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rocky News, number eight. Tom's back, so uh, the tripod's gone. Tom with the tripod, it was a pretty close thing, actually. The tripod had a bit more about it, but, um, well, geez, last weekend, eh, Wales. Fucking hell. Ah, gee, uh, you got to be more precise than that if you're going to play against world champions. Spilled ball, didn't they? Spilled far too much ball, turned it over. It was a poor, poor show. I thought the South Africans were good. I'm not sure they were brilliant, but they were good. They were organised, they were efficient, put pressure on the tackle. Wales just turned over too much ball. They were loose, disorganised. Even their defence didn't have any bite. So, I think they'll improve. Ireland, well, the weather suited them, um, I have to say. Munster Pack, I thought the Kiwis played very well, to be fair, especially their tight five. And the core and Soyalu, thought were outstanding. Carter, not his best game, one great break, <coughs> game over. So interesting to see what they do. <coughs> but just a few other bits and pieces because people have been debating that. I noticed that Roy Keane had been down with the Blacks last week and uh, obviously trying to pick up a lot of stuff from Graham Henry. Quote from Henry, Roy's been great, great to talk to, very bubbly. Mind you, this bit got me. Henry also revealed that he and Keane, he and Keane shared an opinion, common to both football and rugby. Oh, we've probably got similar views, eh? On refs. <coughs> Joked Henry. Fuck me, he's a laugh, isn't he? Jedi's columns down there, rugby heaven and stuff. We've been provoking a few comments. Good to see the Kiwis have got a sense of humour. They don't bite, do they? It's, uh, I've just got a few of the comments here, it was on Rugby Heaven or whatever, it's just like, great. If you had to pick a handful of great centres, Will Carling would not be among them. <laughs> well, we all know that. His form as a scribe is less flattering than his playing days. I like Ryan's comments, except I reckon he should leave his head up his arse. It gives a pretty good indication of his pedigree. He's a bloody idiot. Thank you for that, Brent. Uh, oh yeah, and this one from Mark. My favourite, what he's failed to realise, is that our international coaches are getting their experience coaching overseas, then coming back as better coaches after making the most of their talent learning mistakes overseas. You're right, Mark. And they come back and lose the fucking World Cup. Again. Yeah, fucking sharp, you are. Um, oh, no, my favourite. What a tosser. Will who? <laughs> so anyway, so uh, yeah, popular as ever in New Zealand. Uh, this weekend, Wales will get better. I actually do believe they'll get better. Um, I think Gatlin and Edwards will work them hard to be more precise. Um, they still lose. Ireland will lose to Australia on the dry ground, despite O'Driscoll saying he wants to play a more expansive game. A fatal flaw there in the seven. Wallace is not an out and out open side. And O'Gara, he can't play an expansive game. He sits too deep. He's a tactical kicker. So I can't see that. England, New Zealand, geez, England have picked the young side, haven't they? And they picked Hodgson at 10. Will be interesting. Uh, interesting to see how our back row, Haskell and Reese played very well for Wasps. Can they translate that to the international stage? Back three, young, bit of pace, very inexperienced. If Carter kicks any better than he did last weekend, they're going to be given one hell of a workout. Um, so I'm sure New Zealand will win, um, but I just want to be... Uh, Proud. I just think England see these young boys being a bit more competitive. They've actually picked a side, I think, that can play a little bit more expansively. And that's not the be-all and end-all. But uh, play with a game plan. Should be good. I, New Zealand is a bloody hard place to go. And uh, I have been getting a bit of stick. I just think, <clears throat> I did actually tour there once, but it was with the Lions. Well, I say I toured there. I started on tour, ended up on holiday. Very quickly. Because I was that shy. Um, but it uh, it was amazing, but in the experience with the Lions anyway. But it was uh, I remember this great moment because Gavin Hastings captain the tour. A lot of people were wondering what Hastings was like. You know, got very emotional. It was pretty intense down there. And he'd been injured for the first few games. So the first time he uh, he captained was against the New Zealand Maoris, um, who were a very intellectual side. Uh, and uh, it was at Wellington, I think. Yeah, and we were in the change rooms. Everyone thinking, geez, I wonder what it's going to be like um, with Gav. 
because we heard he got quite worked up four games. So we're getting changed, and about 10 minutes before kickoff, Gav goes, hey, he says, get around and I suckle. Crap accent, I know. Anyway, so we had to explain that to the couple of Irish boys who were playing that day. So the British Lions are all standing around in a circle, and Gav's in the middle. And he starts this very emotional speech. Um, and suddenly he goes, hey, he says, stop, breathe in, I want you to take a big breath through your noses. So we're all like, and he starts his speech again, and he's hitting himself, and he's crying, you know, and, uh, and after about 45 seconds, he realises that quite a few of us are going blue. And he goes, ooh, and ooh, through your moods. And uh, so, <laughs> and I'm standing next to Brian Moore, and he's like, oh, that's how you fucking do it, is it? So the British Lions are breathing in through their noses and out through their mouths as Gav gives his speech, and I can't really remember it, but I remember it ended with a great line that we were going to ram this hacker right up their asses. And uh, so I was like, yeah, yeah. So we ran out, fucking great. 20 minutes into this game, we're 20 points down, we're getting stuffed, and, uh, and we're under the post, places going nuts, you know, um, all the sort of, you know, inbreds and stuff, really getting, you know, chewing their sick fingers, and um, Gavin's trying to talk to us, and the noise is unreal, so we're really having to sort of, you know, lean in, and Mike Teague, as only Mike Teague can, has his hand up, as in classroom, and eventually Gavin looks at him and goes, what? He goes, oh, I'm slightly confused, Gav, and we're all looking at him and goes, when exactly was it that we could ram that hacker up their asses? Which I loved, but didn't go down too well. But despite all the stick, you know, um, that I get for being shit in New Zealand, I, um, I actually did captain the British Lions. People forget that. To their worst ever defeat in history. Until the 2005 tour, which is a bit, a bit of a shame, actually pissed me off. But I did, against Waikato. Um, we got stuffed. But being the fucking great leader that I am, I said, right, we're going drinking, because um, that's fucking leadership for you. And we did. Um, and and Teague sort of had to look after me, um, you know, from after my two shandies. But we were staggering towards this last bar at fucking God knows what time in the morning. And Teague and I uh, needed a piss, so as you do, wandered around the back of it, because for some reason you don't want to go into a bar, do you? You go to the loo, you, you want to go around the back. And we were joined by Andy Reid, who was a Scottish boy, um, born in Cornwall, played for Scotland. He hadn't had a great tour, fucking rich coming from me, um, but he hadn't, and he hadn't had a great game, and he, you know, things hadn't gone too well for him. But anyway, the three of us, heads on the wall as you do, bit of balance, having a pee. And this little guy comes out of the, uh, of the bar, uh, little, I mean, he's smaller than me, but he has his bright blue V-neck, Gulliver's supporters, lion supporters, he has his little hat on. Even in our state, you could see pretty well straight away that this old guy was a lion supporter. And he comes out and he stands out having a pee, I don't know why he came out of the pee, but he suddenly looks at me and goes, Oh, evening, Mr. Carlin. And I'm sort of like, Swivel, mate. Oh, hey, yeah, hi. Oh, e evening, Mr. Teague. And Teague sort of, you know, swivels, hello. And eventually he sees Andy Reid. He says, Oh, Mr. Reid. He said, I've got to be honest, Mr. Reid. I don't think you'd given it your all on this tour. I don't think you had a great game today. And instead of ignoring it, Reid sort of goes, Don't you talk to me like that. I'll fucking chin you. And Teague, who was great, just leaning on the wall, he just swiveled his head looked at the old man, swiveled at the man, looked at Reedy and then said to me, my money's on the old man. He's about fucking right. But a uh, great place to go, so looking forward to the games. Um, looking forward to some more abuse from the uh, from the Kiwis. I can hope someone doesn't actually, you know, put sarcasm down and explain to them what it all fucking is. I would hate them to get in touch with that sort of stuff. So, Jed, write a decent column this week, and uh, to all of you, see you next week.